What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Having Report podcast with myself, your host, Brad Mines. The price of Bitcoin is approximately 28,000 US dollars, and there's about 329 days left until the next Bitcoin halving. And for those of you who don't know, the halving is when Bitcoin miner rewards are cut in half, reducing the overall issuance of coins entering the market. But today, we have Crypty Girl on the show. Crypty Girl has a very interesting story and in how she got involved into the space, and she's also a hat dealer for Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. With the recent price drop of Hex token, we've seen the cryptocurrency fall well below the top 20 market cap of cryptocurrencies. And we're happy to speak to Crypty Girl today to determine whether the Hex stream is over or what the long-term plan is for these deeply involved Hex community members. So without further ado, everybody welcome Crypty Girl to the show. Crypty Girl, welcome to the Having Report podcast. Thanks for having me, Brad. Happy to be here. I'd like to dive right into it with you and what's happening in the Richard Hart ecosystem. We've seen some crazy price fluctuations happening. Uh, recently, we've seen Hex drop down to, uh, I'm not sure if I'm speaking correctly when I say uh, this This cycle's bottoms or close to this cycle's bottoms. What's happening behind the scenes there that's making the price drop so much right now? I would say it's because since Pulse Chain launched, everyone has been waiting. Everyone that participated in the Pulse Chain sacrifice almost two years ago, um, they, that and a sacrifice means that they burned money in for freedom of speech, freedom of movement, and hoping that they would also get um, pulse coins in return for what they sacrificed as far as Ethereum or Hex or any other cryptos that they were holding. So the community didn't know that they would be waiting two years for Pulse Chain to launch, and now that it has, a lot of people just wanted to sell immediately all the all the coins they got whether that was Pulse or whether it was the free copies because Pulse Chain is a fork of Ethereum. And so everything that's on the Ethereum network got copied to the Pulse Chain network. So everyone has uh, two, two Pulse Doge, <laughs> two Shiba Inu, two copies of everything. Um, so there was a bunch of selling that's been going on. And that's kind of what we're seeing now as we're reaching the bottom of those prices before what I expect will be um, a, a bull market coming very shortly. Right. And now is that in anticipation of the Bitcoin having? I think that that could have to do with it, but I haven't been paying attention to the Bitcoin having recently. I haven't been participating in Bitcoin's community as much. So um, it could be, but I also think that the Pulse Chain community uh, is very much autonomous on its own, not not so attached to the price of Bitcoin just because of how liquidity pairs are very much to stable coins instead of to Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency community, like it's so big. How did you get so drawn into the Richard Hart ecosystem? That's a great question. Well, Hex was really the talk everywhere when it launched in 2019, December 2019. <laughs> And there was so much FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt about the HEX token that initially launched on Ethereum. And I was just trying to learn more about it. But um, there was some concerns about, you know, connecting your MetaMask wallet to certain sites, whether that's in HEX or in a different cryptocurrency. You just want to be careful where you connect your browser wallet so that you don't um, jeopardize your, your currencies. So that was something I kind of stayed away from it for a few months. And then I'm like, you know what, this, see, the community has already proven it's been safe to go stake Hex and, and stake and use it and everything. And it looks like a great contract. <laughs> so I'm going to learn more about it and just get involved with the community. So I then, um, I have a friend, Dollar Cost Crypto. He's another crypto YouTuber. And um, I connected with him and he invited me on one of the Hex YouTube shows they have called Discourse Syndicate. So I said, well, I don't know enough to talk about it, but I'd be happy to come ask questions to you guys and learn live on stream. <laughs> so, so he's like, yeah, let's do it. So I came on and it actually was on Hex's first birthday. So on in December 2020, one year later, and I was live on stream learning more about Hex, asking questions. Um, and then this wonderful, benevolent legend named, he goes by the name of Ski Cat, he gifted me on stream one million Hex. 
he he was in the live chat and said, Crypty, I'm going to send you one million hex if you promise to stake it. <laughs> and I was just like, who? What? Is this real? Who is this guy? <laughs> this someone I've never met before, a complete stranger. And and the, the show hosts were like, yeah, no, this is real. I'm like, oh, okay, well, sure, I'll stake it. Thank you so much. And I was just speechless. Um, and then I continue on with the show, just learning more about Hex. And then Ski Cat comes back in the chat and he says, you know what, I'm going to give you two million Hex. <laughs> Wow. I know. And at the time, Hex was, I think, around one penny per unit. Um, and so one million Hex would have been around five grand <laughs> of U.S. dollars. So again, I'm speechless. I'm like, oh, this is insane. I can't believe this is happening. And all the thoughts going through my head, I'm like, imagine what I think Hex can do because of the gamification and tokenomics built into it, that it just does like at least a 10,000 X, but, but becomes such a valuable asset. And imagine how that would change my life of my family and my future family. Um, and the, the town around me, how much good I could do for, for those in the city and what I could fund as far as futuristic technology projects. So I was just like seeing this grand vision. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. So I'm thanking Ski Cat. And then um, he pledges another half million by the end of the show. And then I just started crying. <laughs> I couldn't finish the stream. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm, and I'm gonna have to hop off now. So I made a thank you vid video recording right after that stream and posted it on Twitter to the community. And that was viral. So it was like one of the moments of Hex history that really solidified. Um, it's it's standing as a as a cryptocurrency in the crypto world and i know that so thousands of people tens of thousands of people saw that video and many of them decided to join as hex investors because of it i hear it all the time like crypto i, I got into hex because of your testimony <laughs> and it was all because of the benevolent legend ski cat who i haven't seen around since then um so he's kind of gone gone anonymous again but <laughs> since then i've been buying more and staking but that is how i got introduced to the hex community it's glorious and it's very humbling it's a great way to get people into your community when you give them part of the coin and you see a lot of those airdrops free airdrops but most of the time those coins or tokens aren't worth anything so to, for someone to give you something uh, such a big bag like that. That's super generous of them. That's that's a cool way to enter the ecosystem. Now, you also started promoting and dealing hats for the community, uh, if I'm not mistaken, hacks, Pulse X and Pulse yeah. Chain, uh, different types of hats. You're wearing one there. Uh, I can't quite make oh, yeah. out which one, which which one you have on right now. You're you're a little small on my screen. Is that a is that a oh, Pulse, Pulse Chain? chain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So some people were just wondering, you know, how you got into dealing hats and what motivates you to to be part of this community like this and and sell merchandise. The merchandise, the crypto merchandise came before any of my public uh, videos in crypto. So um, I was actually I think in 2020. Yeah. March of 2020, I launched Crypty Shop. And prior to that, I was just out of college completing an internship, traveling the U.S. a little bit, wondering what would be my next step, where I would decide to go with my career, because that's really the big decision moment, I feel like, what you're going to decide to put your attention and interest into. Um, so I thought, you know, I could go to a corporate world and try to build a career in that and follow the footsteps of my dad, who did something similar but I'd seen my dad kind of miserable growing up over the years and how the creativity just gets sucked out of you. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I don't think I really want to spend my life doing that. So what else could I, could I do? Um, well, I've always felt very ambitious, like I wanted to launch a business of some sort, but I don't have any products right now of what I could do. So I'll just keep that in mind. And then over those couple days, as I was thinking about it, 
I thought, you know, I really love the crypto industry because I'd learned about Bitcoin first and how it's decentralized finance and restore self-sovereignty, sovereign money, and that it's immutable. So I'm like, I would love to educate more people about that if we could restore sovereignty to more people and then eventually this title shift, then we could all have a decentralized currency versus the um, the Federal Reserve notes that the U.S. has been using all these years. That's part of what's been enslaving, you know? So I thought I need another Bitcoin shirt if I'm going to tell people about Bitcoin. <laughs> and I looked online and I didn't see a bunch of great options for, for female shirts or just that they, I like, I didn't like the designs that much. I'm like, oh, you know what? I could create Bitcoin shirts. I could, I could do this. Yeah, I'll design shirts for, for all the cryptos I like and sell it online. And I think that'd be a great business and I'm, I'm very passionate about it. So that's how Crypty was founded, um, as in Crypto T, Crypty, and that's how I got started and launched my business. And now I'm mostly focused in the Pulse Chain community. I also did a bunch of Digibyte apparel since um, that one's very freedom-oriented currency too. So that's the story of Crypty Shop, um, and that's why I started making videos too. Because I'm like, hey, I don't want to stop at just selling apparel. I need to continue with the education to in uh, synchronicity with that. Absolutely. It's super cool that you found something that you can go into with that entrepreneurship uh, spirit. I wanted, to, I wanted to say, I thought it was kind of funny that you mentioned uh, dollar cost crypto. Uh, I had him on my podcast when he went by Litecoin Moses like years oh, ago. Oh, no way. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was a couple of years ago. And he did yeah. tell me about Hex. And I did my free Bitcoin claim, but it was basically worth mm -hmm. nothing. But yeah, we had a great conversation and, and he's just so like well versed in the cryptocurrency community. I feel like he knows so much about so many different projects and uh, I, I, I couldn't find him. I was trying to find him again on Twitter, on social <laughs> media, and then I didn't realize he was like all by dollar cost crypto now. And I was I kept looking for mm -hmm. Litecoin Moses and I couldn't find him, couldn't find him. And now, now I've been following, I came across him again, and I've, now I've been following all his cool uh, you know, shorts and TikTok reels, th things like that, uh, just kind of snippets of, of his podcast. But, uh, you know, he, he's a super interesting guy. I was actually thinking about reaching out to him again, interviewed him such a long time ago, and now he's gone on and he's made something great with, with his show, and he's had you on, and it, that's kind of brought you into this. And it's just interesting to see the, the trickle effect over the years. Full circle. Exactly. My next question is the 5555. Club. I was going to ask you, you know, what's the significance <laughs> there with the, with the hex community? Uh, are you did did your hex gift? Did you stake it for the full length? Are you long, long, long term on this? Are you do you have different stakes for different amounts of times? What's that all mean to you? Great question. I forgot to add that detail. One of the most important details of the ski cat gift. He gifted me my first big hex stake. So um, it turns out. When he sent the hex, he he sent three million total instead of two and a half million, just because he's such a benevolent man. So I staked two million of that hex for the full amount, five thousand five hundred fifty-five days, the full amount possible in the hex contract, which is about fifteen point two years, and also wow. gives you um, the rights to say you're in the five 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 club <laughs> in in your social media profiles. And then the other 1 million hex, I laddered those stakes out for every single year so that I would have passive income stakes in one year, two year, three years, all the way up to 15 years so that I would have passive income during that time. Very cool. Yeah, no, I see there's so much noise around this community right now. And, and I usually don't focus so much on hex in the Richard Hart ecosystem. But like I said, I'm always seeing... Uh, Pulse X, Pulse Chain, Hacks, Richard Hart, Richard <laughs> Hart was right, trending. I'm always seeing these things on Twitter when I'm on there. So I have been looking, uh, paying attention more, giving the community more more attention t uh, because you guys have been very successful, um, especially with the community. It's just It just seems like such a vibrant community. So uh, super, super interesting it's people absolutely I'm grassroots. always talking to from the Hacks community. Definitely seems like a very grassroots movement. People 
very much believe in it. There's a lot of prominent people in the space that were or that are in on the new Pulse Chain Ethereum fork. I'm not saying I'm telling people to you know go all in on Hex or you know to move all their Bitcoin or Ethereum into Hex. I'm just saying that uh, you know as a media company, it deserves some sort of attention. Are there other cryptocurrencies uh, or blockchain projects that you're interested in beyond the Richard Hart ecosystem? Yes, um, I'm always receptive to other cryptocurrencies because each of them have a different use case. So it's like comparing apples and oranges sometimes. It's like you can't say orange is better than an apple when, when it has a different function. So I do like to see other projects with different use cases. Um, but one of the things that I really appreciate from the Pulse Chain ecosystem is that it's what's a lot of times protecting people from so many of the scams that we see pop up in crypto. Because there are a lot of scammers and um, a lot of fake liquidity projects, things that are simply just to take, take investors' money. Um, so for now, I am sticking with the Pulse Chain ecosystem mainly. Um, but I'm, I'm always receptive to others. And I do think as time goes on that we'll see a lot of equity tokens coming, which I'm really excited for that. As we go into the next five to 10 years, I think we'll see a lot of stock companies decide to tokenize their securities on the blockchain rather than issuing stocks in the stock market that they'll tokenize the equity in their company on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So that'll be really cool to see. Um, and one of the main companies doing that right right now, well, it hasn't launched yet, but an example would be Mad Energy as a company plans to tokenize its equity onto the Pulse Chain blockchain. Um, so that's going to be really cool to see. And um, I think a lot of sectors of the economy could also be tokenized so to tokenize the energy from a utility company, like imagine what that would do since we need energy 24 <laughs> seven, then would it be this same performance? Would it have bear markets or <laughs> would it not? Because you always need energy. So it'll be interesting to see those kind of things coming up. Um, but I will say the SEC is cracking down on those kind of things right now. So. Uh, we're kind of just waiting it out. Would you be able to elaborate on your role as an ambassador for Mad the Future and kind of how that relates back to the cryptocurrency community? Absolutely. So Mad Energy is a clean energy infrastructure company um, and also a technology incubator besides just energy projects. Um, so they're one of their main projects is a liquid natural gas project in the nation of Suriname, just above Brazil in South America. And that project is going to be, a lot of it will be funding uh, the more advanced future projects such as quantum wave wireless energy, safe wireless energy, something that Nikola Tesla had invented over 100 years ago. And so as an ambassador, I'm just as passionate about their mission to provide clean, abundant energy for the world as they are. And so that's how I decided to get involved. Um, because imagine, imagine our world with everyone having access to wireless energy, then suddenly products and services become so much cheaper because it's a lot more affordable to produce if it's pennies on the dollar. So um, the clothes I'm wearing, the food we eat, uh, the the hardware that we produce, all of it becomes so much cheaper to produce that then suddenly products become abundant. And then with the abundance of everything, I'd also imagine that um, it would reduce crime a lot because crime criminals often have a mindset of lack, things that I don't have this, so I need to go steal it from my neighbor. <laughs> but imagine if everyone has access to everything, then is anyone actually going to steal anything anymore? So then you have people then focusing um, and people don't have to work as much the nine to five jobs. I think that will become obsolete that that concept of nine to five. So then people are focusing on more altruistic things, spending time with their family, um, gardening, having a nice homestead, becoming self-sufficient and just being all together more loving and compassionate towards one another. So I really see it moving us towards a Star Trek future, so to say. Um, and with wireless energy, theoretically, it would also um, power airplanes wirelessly and trains wirelessly. 
why couldn't we have flying cars? I mean, once we have the wire, safe wireless energy everywhere, utilizing a Zenic wave. And I'll explain that for a moment. A Zenic wave is much different than the Hertz wave that we use currently. So our 5G radio towers um, and radios in the car, they all use small microwaves and that's with the Hertz wave. And it kind of like shoots out energy at random in all directions and it's not very um, predictable. So, and it's very, very high pitched, very high frequency. And the Zenic wave is very low frequency, long, slow waves like that, that moves with the, the atmosphere of our Earth, the electromagnetic field of Earth. Um, and it would seem it also resonates with the human body safely and passes through living things harmoniously. So with that, um, it can travel underneath the surface of the ocean, well, all the way to the depths of the ocean and could power everything in our atmosphere and being very low frequency, um, not harming, and then also predictable where the waves are going to then trickle off and end. So much more predictable. And I think that um, that'll be very useful for, for our utility companies too. So with all of that, um, that's why I decided to get involved because I'm really excited about this Star Trek future that I see through this company, see coming through this company. It's very magical, the technology that's coming out. We're talking about what you just said and, and the AI push. There's, there's so much happening right now. And I totally agree with you when you said that the nine to five is going to be obsolete. You know, we're going we're gonna to have these tools and, and abundance. What scares me is that humans have been becoming a lot more productive, but for some reason, we keep working longer hours. So I feel like, although there's some sort of abundance, you see uh, the way the system's set up, maybe a barrier to, to that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was intended to be a barrier, how, how our current economy functions. Um, with all of us working nine to fives, how, how public education was initially founded in America and well, really across the world, it was all designed to work together negatively to kind of keep humans busy, busy work always, um, not no time to reflect, um, to keep humans entertained with sports games and to not let them have time to really think for themselves to like tell them what to think with the news media um, and then you get into like that that's a really big topic but it, it would seem that everything was designed to really keep us um, from learning more about who we are because when you take the time in solitude to just think and reflect and wonder about your purpose in life and discover who you are it is so enlightening and so liberating. That's something that personally I take the time a lot to, if I can on my drive or after work to just take a few minutes by myself or even before I go to bed, um, maybe I'll go outside and lie down and just look at the stars and think about why I'm here and maybe what I'm gonna do this week or trying to get um, personal sense out of the way because I found a lot of times when I have my own agenda, things just don't work out harmoniously, but to to just kind of surrender to a higher power, basically, that um, whatever I'm meant to be doing, that's what I'm going to be open to and listening for. And that's how I lead my life. And well, as you see with like the ski cat gift, so many wonderful things happen when when you do that, when when you're just open and listening and are guided divinely. And then also I'd say gratitude, just being grateful for all the good you have allows you to receive more good. It just, it's a natural attraction. <laughs> more good will come to you when you're already so grateful for the good you have. Um, I know that was a long answer to your question, but I think that's the best way I'd put it. Yeah, and gratitude seemed to be a theme on your page, uh, your online presence. I would love for you to expand a little bit more on, on how gratitude plays out in for, with yourself, with the crypto community, and so much differing perspectives within the community. Oh, that is such a good question. It's funny that each of us can be very different 
in our in their indiv- individual characters. I found that you can love all ideas. You don't have to like all people, but you can love all ideas because liking includes like includes liking people's actions, which we don't always like people's actions. <laughs> so I've been able to really like transcend and look past people's actions and separate their actions from the individual being of who they are and really see them in divine love and just to to express that for them. And then whenever they do something good, good actions that I really appreciate, then I often express my gratitude verbally to them because it's very encouraging and it fosters a good community. And I've seen that the more I do that, the more they will go forth and Um, share that goodness and that gratitude with others and then it just becomes a positive network instead of the negative network that we often hear about on crypto twitter and crypto twitter has some of the most it would seem degenerate people (laughs) but like i said looking past that and separating the actions from the people and really just showing them like hey i i think you have a great heart and thank you for doing this i really appreciated that then I often see people rise to the expectations that you set for them and it's it becomes a flourishing community. Yeah, no, and and the crypto community, I mean, I see it continue to flourish like you. I, I'm pretty bullish, uh maybe even a perma bull for for the long term definitely. Uh obviously, I think the Bitcoin having has a huge effect on on the price, not only the price of Bitcoin, but the community as a whole. So my, my belief is we'll, we'll see, you know, t- six months beyond the halving, we'll see another all time high with Bitcoin. And maybe some some projects have their own independent price fluctuations. But I still f- think that push through Bitcoin provides a lot more liquidity and, and th- through the ecosystem. I'm in the camp of wanting to all see all people succeed uh with with their investments and you know get beyond this this system that's kind of uh constrained us from becoming the spiritual humans that we are you know whether we flick that light switch on or not you know the human being is spiritual and i'm excited for a world of abundance uh, where people can be in tune with nature more and just live out uh how how they should really live out and not maybe behind a desk uh doing one one task all day long or maybe you're digging a ditch all day long you know you can jump around be creative you know expend energy where you where you want to when it's appropriate what advice would you give to new people coming into the space that is a great question well to see what resonates with you Ultimately, I think at the highest level, you want to make sure that you're resonating with what you're looking at. And then at a practical level, to do great research, researching the history of the cryptocurrency and of the founder, if there is one that is public, um, to to make sure you have your security as priority. So having a hardware wallet <laughs> and knowing how to um, secure all your funds, possibly having more than one engraving seed words into metal cards instead of like paper and pencil, not storing any private keys online on digital devices. So some of those practical things, security is always priority because if you get rich, but then you don't know how to secure your funds, <laughs> then it's the funds can be gone very easily, right? Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. Uh, you know, digital asset security is probably the most important thing. Uh, so you know, that's very good words of wisdom for new people coming in. Uh, you know, price price can go through the moon, but at the end of the day, uh, if people take your money or you lose it, you lose your password. You know, it's extremely painful and, and hard to deal with and to start from scratch. So, uh, yeah, I would I would agree with that. That digital digital asset security is probably the most important thing, and uh, and maybe even diversify within that as well. Maybe you got something on this hardware wallet, maybe you got some on this, maybe you just don't want to have too much in one bag and uh, in one shoebox. That's, that's for sure. Um, Crypto girl, what, what else do you like to do when you're not uh, talking about cryptocurrency? (laughs) I love to dance and sing. Like it is just the expression of the joy of my being. Just, I'm a very musical person. So I just dance around. (laughs) And um, I also, I like to get involved in my local community and just see how I can um, 
benefit and give of myself and lift others up. So I often volunteer. And yeah, I love to go swimming in the summer and I just picked up snowboarding this last winter. So that was interesting and so much fun to learn to snowboard. <laughs> I didn't expect that I, I would be a snowboarder, but it's actually so freeing. Just it feels very angelic floating down a hill of snow. <laughs> so that's me. And um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm glad you had me on your podcast. It was super fun and I'm I'm grateful to share and I also really appreciate your point of um the all of the crypto space really taking accountability for themselves by investing in decentralized cryptocurrencies because I I do want to see the whole space uplifted and benefit um cuz a lot of times we see tribalism, but I would love to see everyone succeed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's funny when we see the legacy system attack the crypto community. That's when we see so much uh, rejoice and, you know, people in the community coming together. Because like you said, it's very, very tribal. But there are those moments when we get attacked as a whole and we all kind of stand together. And those are those are my favorite Absolutely. moments. Yeah, m much agreed there. Crypto Girl, can you tell us where we can follow you and learn more? Yes, so I am at Crypty Girl, C R Y P T Y Girl, on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm also there on YouTube, but I'm not posting on YouTube at the moment. Um, just make sure that you're not following any Crypty Girl impersonators. You can also reach me at Crypty Girl on Telegram. So that that is me right now. Um, and thank you again for having me on, Brad. Hey, you. Thanks for listening to the Having Report podcast. If you like the show and want to support, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to leave us a comment. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Having Report. If you're a Canadian and you want to buy Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for the first time, get a $20 bonus when you go to bitbuy.ca forward slash having. If you want $30 off the ultimate digital asset security device BitFi, go to havingreport.com forward slash BitFi for more information. Until next time, I'm Brad Mines.